Ben Hallra, Associate Dean of uh, Biology of Brown and uh, Co-PI. Yep. And um, so we all need to thank Sally Bowman, our, our um, project administrator, for organizing this meeting, getting everyone here and getting the phone callers in, the video, so that way we can um, post it on YouTube afterwards for our colleagues who weren't able to join us. Sheila, um, Sheila's connected. Yes, and yeah, that's right. And Sheila, um, Sheila Leota, another member of our steering committee, is from Providence College, is, is connected via, via the phone. So, yeah, here I am. Hi, Sheila. Thank you. Um, so I have, I gave you guys just a brief, um, just a brief synopsis of what I hope to get through today. I want to try as best we can to get done it too, because I know several of you have to leave at that point. Everyone's time is precious, uh, but I'll be around afterwards if you want. If you have more questions, I'm not, you know. So if you don't get it, ask something right away. Just you know, just hang tight there. Um, I just, I'm going to sort of walk through some of these items. We'll probably get through quick, quicker than others. So the questions are: Who is in charge? I guess the buck ultimately stops with me. I'm lead PI on developing this run on um, NSF, it should say NSF in their F score proposal. Um, and currently, we have, you know, as you guys know, Rhode Island has an existing NSF proposal. Jennifer Specker is lead PI on that through July 1, at which point she steps down in that role, and then I take over as lead PI of the current grant. So just if you're involved in the current NSF proposal, she is the person going to typically getting in touch with, I'd say, if you need to get in touch with her now, email myself as well as Jennifer and Sally because Jennifer's out on sick leave for a couple weeks just so we can make sure if it's something urgent that we get it taken care of. Um, there, there is an expert steering committee that administers the current grant as well as, as well as this developing proposal. I've already introduced Ed Hara to you, Sheila Leota, who's, on, who's joining us um, via telephone, and then we have two other members of the steering committee, um, Charlie Cannon from RISD and Christine Smith from Rhode Island Commerce. And Jennifer. Carol, I'm on. Oh, you are? Oh, oh great. Hi, Christine. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Great. Okay. Great. I just I have it on mute so you don't hear my office noise. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> um, and Jennifer Specker is also a member of the current the Export Steering Committee for the for the existing grant that we have. Um, one other key person is um, is the the, um, the NSF EPSCOR project director for our for our grant, who is John Kirby, who is the Dean of Cells, the College of Environmental Life Science here at URI. That's a relatively New appointments and things have gotten shifted around. Um, he, is, he is my dean, so he and I are interacting pretty frequently as well. Okay, so those are some of the key folks, um, and I want to just move on to sort of what is EPSCOR. Some of you guys may know this very well. Others of you I know are newer to, to, to NSF EPSCOR. So EPSCOR stands for, I can finally say this, probably in my sleep, um, the Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. Uh, and this grant is for, the proposal we're developing is for what's called um, Track 1, it's a Research Infrastructure Improvement Grant. And so the big point of this grant, I'll even read to you a quote from last year's RFP. This year's RFP is not out yet. Any day now it should be. Everything is delayed because of the government shutdown and everything that happened last fall. So that's delayed everything. So that program officer promised me any day now it will be released. As soon as it does, I will distribute that. Um, so the goal from last year's RFP, which he said is pretty similar, is to support physical, human, cyber infrastructure improvements in the STEM research areas by the jurisdiction steering committee, namely the Rhode Island Steering Committee, as having the best potential to improve research and development competitiveness of this jurisdiction for the state. So the big goal of this here is that, you know, just like the existing um, Track 1 F-score grant that we have, that we're in the year four of right now, the five-year grant, this next, this, um, this next grant also is going to be the real goal is to enhance the research infrastructure and collaborativeness of the state as a whole. So I sort of want to make sure everyone sort of coming into this and participating in this sort of has that sort of as their grand vision, right? We have nine institutions involved, many different, you know, research areas in the current program as well as the new one. We have creative outlets primarily through RISD. We have K-12 outreach, public outreach, undergraduate involvement, graduate student involvement economic development, we have all these different components. Um, so one of my goals is to make sure that sort of as we're getting involved with this, clearly I want to be as transparent as possible sort of in the process of how we're going along. Uh, but the goal is that, is that this is enhancing the research infrastructure of the state as a whole, not sort of as a way of sort of bankrolling, say like my personal research program or something like that. So I just sort of want, want people to have that in the backs of their heads, and in particular, we have nine institutions, you know, URI, Brown, and then seven primary undergraduate institutions, and one of the, you know, one of the, the big focuses so far has been, you know, 
trying to, you know, different undergraduate institutions have different levels of research faculty um, and research capabilities. It's really, you know, trying to enhance that as well. So for each part of this proposal, we're going to have to make sure that we're incorporating numerous institutions, which is why we started off, the steering committee started off even before I was involved with the white paper saying, okay, we need PIs from multiple institutions working together. That was a big part of it. Okay, so there's a couple of just um, homework assignments I have for everybody that are separate, which has to do with anyone who is involved in the existing, the current grant as it stands. Our year four annual, annual report is due very soon, less than a month away. Um, and so we've been working with each institution's partner liaison, so each institution has a member, um, has a person who's, who's, a, who's has a more direct role with, with NSF score to get in your institution's piece. And also in particular, for any faculty, individual faculty are involved, um, we want to make sure that you, you have all your information, you know, your, your, you know for, especially for this current year, year four, your presentations, your publications, things like that, uploaded into what's called the ER4, the, uh, the, the management system. And Sally, I don't know, Sally, if you want it, if you, okay, that's good, okay. Um, so that is a critical piece. If we want to have a successful new proposal that we'll be submitting, hopefully at some point this summer, we have to, especially this year, really shine on our year four annual report, and we can only do that if everyone gets their stuff in um, very soon, within the next week or so, so that that way we have a couple weeks to frantically, you know, finish pulling everything together. So um, if if that's you. Um, thanks to those of you who have done it. Some institutions have gotten more of their stuff in, but that's just sort of a critically important part for me that we need to do. Okay. Um, so I want to spend some time, and feel free to ask questions if you guys have questions as we're going forward through some of these, um, talking a little bit about the writing responsibilities and the roles and kind of who's in charge of some of the different sections and things like that. So. You know, a while, a few weeks ago, I, when I was emailing each of the research groups, so all the folks who submitted round two white papers, um, most of those white papers, we grouped into different clusters and emailed the lead authors on those and said, okay, you know, here is sort of your cluster, here is, you know, sort of, it's just in general marching orders in terms of, you know, sort of how much, approximately how much text we're going to need for each section of this growing proposal. Um, I sent out budget numbers this morning. If you haven't seen that, all the budget numbers, trying to be as transparent as possible, are um, down down at the bottom here of your of your handout. It looks slightly different than mine here. Um, and one of the things that I that I want to want to mention is that this is all sort of um, each piece is important, and also bringing them together as a whole is really important. That's why, like, I sent out the previous F score. You know, I didn't send you guys the whole thing which if anyone wants to take a look, that's the current one. Um, the next one will be bigger because NSF's, at least according to last year's RFP, has now a lot more pieces that they want in addition to this. Um, but don't be surprised when I come to you, everyone, and say, okay, I need your current CV, I need your current pending. That, that thankfully is a sizable chunk of this. But, um, but budgets are a much bigger chunk as well as the document text. Um, as long as last year's was the main document text is 25 pages, which a standard NSF proposal is 15 pages, so it's significantly larger. And then there's lots of additional two, three page documents they want as well. Um, so I know here today, both in person, um, people who have expressed interest, we have, we have folks who are sort of, who have been involved in the white paper process since its inception last fall, which was well before I became involved with in this new role with EPSCOR. Um, but we also have some, some folks who either weren't involved in that or you know, sort of coming out and saying, hey, I want, I want to be a part of this. And we, we want to sort of welcome and encourage that. What we, what we want to do is to say to folks, okay, kind of see where you fit in to these different frameworks. Um, see who might be the best person of contact because that's why you have the other handout that lists who's in charge of each section in terms of the research sections of this proposal that kind of fall out from um, the research and there's other outreach and development parts on here too that fall out from just the one page draft I emailed everyone a couple weeks ago. Um, so you can kind of look, if you're not sure, you can come and talk to me, ask me for some more clarification. I'm happy, happy for that, but just to kind of try to organize this as best we can, that's probably going to be the most useful way rather than having like Everyone who's potentially interested, maybe who was in white papers, 
say directly getting into contact with me, I would say, look at this first. You know, if you kind of look and go, oh yeah, I could maybe I could you know assist on this part of the proposal, fit in here. That's great. If you're not sure, yeah, come ask me at the steering committee, and we're happy to provide guidance. Um, one of the big things that we need to include here. I'm kind of how am I doing on time here? Oh, good, doing great. Okay, one of the big things we need to make sure we include in each of these components is multi-institutions. I've kind of already mentioned that, and it's you know it's hard for me when I'm, I appreciate all your patience on waiting for budget numbers. Maybe you're happy with the budget target number you got. Maybe you're not. Um, we can get mad at you if you want, but. We had sort of had to take the budgets that we have existing in the current proposal as well as look at, we need to make sure we're distributing money across all the different institutions and that we're continuing to support existing centers like the Genomic Center, the Proteomic Center, um, Marine Life Science Facility, the CCV. Two of those are at Brown, two of those are at URI in different locations. Uh, we need to make sure we have a very strong, say, undergraduate student research component. That's been, you know, pretty much everyone I talk to says, Oh, make sure you include that piece in this proposal. This is, you know, this has just been a key, wonderful piece, and that's, you know, that that's definitely in there. Um, that is that undergrads, you know, that's going to have its, you know, that has its own pot of money through Jim Lemeyer. But in each of the main areas that we have, say under those current writing responsibilities, we need to, you need to sort of be writing in the context of, okay, how can we frame these questions broadly? Again, we're trying to over, you know, enhance the overall research infrastructure. Um, how might my piece, say, work with a different piece, you know, of a different part of the proposal? And then um, make sure we want to be incorporating graduate student training. That's a critical part of this. And we want to make sure, you know, each one of those key of the research pieces, you know, has a piece for graduate student training. Maybe later we'll separate that out and put it all together. Maybe we'll have it parsed out by institution. I'm not sure yet how that's going to work, but grad student training is going to be a big. It's going to be is we need we need to have a substantial complement of that. Um, we also need to make sure that if you're requesting equipment as part of you know your package, which cer certainly you know some groups definitely will be, um, you also need to be budgeting for whatever the service. If it's a big expensive piece of equipment. You know, I have a mandate. Service contracts have to be a part of that. If we're going to be requesting something big. <laughs> um, you send me a budget that looks lovely, but there's no service contracts, and you've got in like you know hundreds of thousands of dollars a piece of equipment. I'm going to send it back and say, um, we need this. That's that's important. That's incredibly important. It doesn't make sense for us to buy a really big piece of equipment if we can't sustain them. Um, so uh, make sure you have that. And another thing I want to touch on in general. Is that um, you know this? Everything I'm saying is couched under the way my conversations with the program officer, the way last year's RFP is written, the way the current NSF you know grant that we have is working. Things could change a bit. You know, if, the, if there's something new or different that's tweaked in the new RFP, as soon as that comes out, I will pass that on. Um, but something that is important is that um, I know lots of different pieces of proposals that came in. You know, have you know. You, you have you know, equipment in there and supplies and grad student funding and travel and some faculty support, et cetera. I would say just um, keep in mind as, as we're writing this, at least in terms of the current F-score grant, faculty support is, is in there, but in terms of, say, if it's summer salary for nine-month nine um, employees, that's, that has typically not been as big a piece. That's something that's a conversation I'm going to have with the program officer once the new RFP comes out to see about that. It also varies if, say, if somebody at URI or Brown versus someone at a PUI who's really trying to get their research program up and going. So those are just, th those are just things to keep in mind. And we definitely also want to support new faculty, um, developing faculty, as best we can, too. OK. Yes, Jeff. I have a yeah. Yeah. So uh, just a uh, quick question. Yeah. So if, if we uh, are looking to integrate our kind of nano area in education, mm -hmm. graduate, undergraduate outreach, yes. the funds for that, would that come out of the nano part budget, or would that come out of the education or the outreach budgets that we see written? You can say anything for grad students. So if we want a grad student, grad students, a separate category for grad students within the budget, or does that come out of it? OK, that's a great question. Grad students are going to come out of whatever the budget numbers are that everyone got. Um, under, you know, say if it's undergraduate or public outreach or something like that, 
I would strongly encourage you to get in touch with whoever the appropriate person is. I mean, the goal is just like now we have a surf program for the entire F score. You know, it's not to our advantage if we're like, oh, we have this surf program over here for this group and then this other one over here. You know, we're going to have a cohesive surf program. Maybe it depends, you know, what the focus is or something like that. I would encourage you for those sorts of, you know, have those conversations with the people who are in charge of these other proposals. And maybe you want it going, hey, oh, for us, this one outreach component is really important. Then maybe, yeah, we want to shuffle our respective budgets around or something like that. I mean, these are just, these are just starting target numbers. Everything's going to change based on, you know, sort of how everything falls out, you know, because right now I'm being conservative in my budget numbers just because I'm assuming sort of a, you know, sort of a URI rate of overhead, which is lower than Brown's, but is higher than other institutions. I'm not separating out what I think my equipment costs might be. So these numbers might shift. I'm trying to be low. You know, hopefully your numbers won't go down, but, you know, this, I would just ask everyone to keep in mind there's a lot of moving targets here. We're trying to put everything together. So, you know, as, as forthright as I can be with everyone, I want to be, but, you know, we, these are sort of, these are targets here. Yes, yeah. just to build up that question. Yes. So, I'm Amy Dunkel with the um, outreach um, groups. So, that means, like, if somebody else had an outreach component in their, mm -hmm. in the, like, in his paper, yeah. that would yeah. fit in, because, you know, we've built ours based on a specific list of, Right, well, you would identify. That's what we have. Yes. Like, but like if he had something that would fit within that, we could bring that in and then adjust our numbers accordingly is what you're I, saying. Well, and we could look yeah. at the framework and design right. something that would work. That would fit. That. Okay, so we have, I just didn't under, yeah. I just want to make sure about the flexibility as we, as we kind of head towards this juncture. Yeah, and, and that's what, that's, that's sort of what I'm hoping for too, okay. because that's something NSF at least really wants to see based on our past site visits. You know, they really want to see people, you know, especially in different areas, different institutions sort of linked together. I mean, you guys are both at URI, but, you know, sort of having this cross-fertilization so that we go seamlessly from one thing into the next, and it's not like, oh, we have this over here and then this one over here. So the more conversations you can have, the stronger our proposal is going to be. Jeff, did you have a question? Oh, yeah, well, I was just, so just wanted to quickly, quickly clarify, make sure yes. I understand. So surf and outreach could go into something like that, but you'd probably want to keep the grad students within your specific Yes, at least, at least for now. We okay. may then take all the pieces and then see, okay, you know, maybe we want to have, you know, because also grad student money is probably also going to be really, when we do the actual budgeting, like for NSF, allocated by institution. Sure. You know, so there's, there's, you know, we just sort of ask for flexibility, but we also might see, we look, we like, we're like, okay, one group is allocating nothing to grad students, the other group is allocating a whole lot. Let's see, maybe if we can work together and and have some sort of balance so that way grad students in a variety of fields could have, you know, could have some support. Right, cross talk with grad students. That, yeah. that would be that would be really important too because that's a whole piece. I mean, engineering is really, I would say, the big, a very, you know, sort of a very new piece that we're bringing into, you know, the, into into the export frameworks. And so, especially in that case, the better we can integrate, showing, okay, look, these engineers, they have these tools, we have. The life scientists on this side, you know, we have some other folks, we have applied mathematicians in here. That was, that, you know, that's a new focus that we haven't had in the last one. So better. Yeah. Let me just ask, are there any questions from our callers? Because I can't see you raising your hands, clearly. Nope. No, not yet. Okay. All right. Um, okay, any other questions so far? That's good. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, please. Yes. Is there an economic development piece in this somewhere? Okay, that's something else I'm getting to here. Okay. okay. So thank, thank you for bringing that up because that that is economic development is a smaller part of the existing EPSCOR grant. From all indications, economic development is going to have to be a larger part of the next grant. Um, so that's something that for each of the um, essentially the, the four research areas. When I sent your initial emails, I mentioned, you know, you need to, and this, this is in part based on my conversations um, with numerous folks, including Jerry Sonnenfeld, our Vice President for Research, before he became ill, um, that each one of these components really needs to think about and identify how is economic development going, you know, how could this be important or integrated? Because this is what NSF, they want to see. They want to be enhancing research infrastructure, but they really want to be seeing how that can turn into 
enhance economic development, which may take a variety of forms. And admittedly, you know, I'm a life scientist. I'm not an <coughs> economic development person. You know, that's, that's they, they, they pick for this, not not an economic folk. But I know there was at least one group, um, Dan McNally's group, I guess. Yeah, that had you guys had written in, you know, in, in an incubator in there. So I would encourage you to to you know expand that, see see how that might work. But we want to make sure that economic development is integrated throughout the different areas as best we can. And this is this is a new thing. And a lot of us, like at least speaking for myself, are not economic development folks. Maybe some folks have more expertise than others. Um, we're certainly going to be working with um, Catherine Flynn over at the URI Research Foundation. I know they have a meeting, I do believe April 15th, for staff awardees and other potentially interested folks on economic development, enhancing enhancing those links. But that's that's going to be something that's critically important, and we want that to be as integrated to each piece as we can. I know some some things are going to be easier to do than others, and so you know if you're kind of stuck or stumbling. Shoot me an email. Shoot each other emails, and we'll try to, you know, we'll try to sort of work together to get this going the right direction. Because also, this is, you know, I've written lots of regular grants. This is the first time I'm doing something big like this too. So, you know, I kind of ask for everyone's uh, patience and working together because that, that's how we're going to get this. You know, I can't sit down and write this whole thing by myself. That that would never happen. And that's also why the draft I sent out of sort of our general research goals moving forward was kind of purposely vague because I want some of the more specific guidance to come from lots of people talking together. I'm happy to be a part of those conversations if you want me to be, or not if you'd rather you know, talk amongst yourselves. But I want this to be you know, a truly collaborative effort in that regard, because that, that's going to showcase our strengths. Because you know, if I wrote the thing, I'd be writing it on with like harmful algal blooms, and that's, that's nice, but that's not, you know, that's my research, but that's not you know, what's going to get this funded. Um, okay, I have a question. Yes, so, okay. yes. so, because we have different clusters, and yes. the different clusters have people from different institutions. Right? Yes. So, I mean, as, <laughs> as the same as with the grad students, I mean, yeah. gonna, ultimately the, the award will be given per institution, I'm guessing, right? Yes. So, when is that you is. want yes. the integration to happen? Before the final draft or after that? Because we're going to have to, I mean, some overlap to be, you know, somehow. Absolutely. Yeah, and this is, and this is where, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good question. Do you want to do it after the, after the, the submission or before we start talking to the other clusters to be sure that no, if we fix overlaps? I would say as much as you can talk to the other clusters, and that's what I gave you guys, everyone's, you know, at least the primary contact people. And I'll sort of let you guys figure out amongst yourselves, like for a particular group, if, you know, if there's two names listed, if you both want to be in charge, if one of you wants to be in charge, that, that's totally up to you guys. But I would say the more, the more you can talk, yeah, because the budget, you know, what we submit to NSF, yeah, is going to be by institution, by year. So that's eventually what we have to get to. But typically, like, when people are thinking about research ideas, first you sort of come up with the research ideas, and then usually you parse out, OK, what piece is going to be you or this group, and what piece is going to be that group. Mm -hmm. And again, I would say you know, keep as long as you know, the research ideas. That's why I sent like, you guys the existing, um, you know, this, just, you know, just, the, um, just that 25 page mm -hmm. texter. You kind of see that you know, the research ideas in there are, are typically pretty, you know, they're, they're fairly broadly defined. NSF may come back and say, ask us for more detail. They did with this one, and then they had to submit an additional like, 10 page document that detailing some things, some more things. Yeah, that, was, that looked like a lot of fun. They gave us like a, them a week and a half or something to submit. <laughs> All this additional stuff in January. They're like, give it back to us in 10 days. I looked at that email. Um, but that's what we're working. And clearly, you know, if you go and you're going through and you're going, like, no, this doesn't make sense, you know, I'd rather do it this way. Talk to me, and we'll see. We'll see if that can work. Maybe it. Maybe it can. Maybe it can't. Can't in the grand context of like, there's a lot of folks here, and that's not. You know, this isn't everybody. But yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think sorting that out uh -huh. at a time is really critical. Yeah. You know, finding where those connections can be made. It's kind of you know finding the glue that really sticks all of these different elements together. And now that uh, well, engineering, we're, we're yeah. involved now, and now we have math too. You know, the question is naturally going to be: If I was a panel member, well, how are students from uh, for, from from GSO, and how are students from biological sciences going to be interacting with the engineering students? That new component, and so figuring out how that, for example, would work, is going to be important. Right? Yeah, and it's, and students you know from other institutions yeah. also, you know, and yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, and you know, both of the engineering white papers. I mean, you guys had you know, investigators from multiple institutions as well, so yeah. it's going to depend sort of how many layers of overlapping we want to have. But yeah, mm -hmm. we had integration. 
Okay. Um, several people sort of asked me about, okay, we have, we have sort of the deadline of May 1 in terms of getting these sections in. Everyone sort of has their marching orders of, you know, okay, like about, you know, different groups have sort of different amounts of text. This is, this is ballpark. Um, the problem that we're running into right now is the RFP is, as I mentioned, is not out yet. But if I wait till the RFP is out, then everyone is going to be into summer research or summer whatever mode. And I can't, clearly I want to avoid that. I want to get everyone while they're still, you know, everyone's pretty much here on campus, working together, getting that out. As soon as the RFP comes out, which should be in a week or so, give or take, fingers crossed, um, then I'm going to set up sort of a series of later deadlines because clearly this is the first step. You know, we're going to need, once we get all the pieces, we're going to need to be integrating those. We're going to need to be adding an additional text. Some of that text is probably going to be, say, if, you know, like NSF wants, say, you know, um, certain certain statements might be boilerplate text that say my our research office has, or the ground research office has, or whatever research office might already have. But there's probably going to be a lot of then continued writing because I can take all these pieces, but you know, for something of this magnitude, right? It's it's not going to be just me then putting them together. Uh, we we're going to be working near the later stages with with um, TIG, some outside, some consultants in Washington D.C. who have extensive experience with. Um, with sort of writing and fine-tuning export proposals. So we have some outside resources as well, but, um, but I'm just kind of chafing by not knowing is our, is our submission deadline, if, like last year's submission deadline was August 6th, which means really we need everything done by essentially the beginning of July, so that we have a month to make sure all those budgets are in place. It has time to go back and forth with the outside consultants a few rounds and edit and find tweak things. Um, but until I know what, you know, I know the deadline, August 6th deadline, it, at least what I've been told is it shouldn't be earlier than last year's. But if it's later, how much later, that may then change what some of the other, you know, sort of how we proceed. Um, so I don't want you guys to go, oh, well, she gave us one deadline and then what happens after that. It's in part because without the RFP, fine tuning some of those later deadlines, you know, doesn't, doesn't seem to make it. You know, a whole lot of sense to me. But regardless, before May one, we'll have you know we'll have some more um, some more things figured out. Even if the RFP is not yet, yeah, but I'm just going to have to keep you know continuing on this because I want to make sure we get at least the bulk of writing things done before everyone is you know off and you know and you know, we're working on their summer on their summer plans. Yes, Tatiana. Uh, yes. In your draft that you yes. sent out. And yeah. I don't, did it include a copy of the white papers? And no, so I sent out, I actually, yes, I have a question for everyone. Well, at that point it did not because I didn't have people's permission and I didn't, and then people started saying, hey, we'd like to see each other's. Right. So either yesterday or the day before, I sent an email to everyone with white paper, with a Dropbox drop folder link. Did you guys get that? Yeah. Okay. It was sent to the lead. Time to do it. Huh? <laughs> we what? haven't had time to look at everything. No, that's, no, 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 that's fine. I know, I know. No, no, I just want to make sure it got gone out because I think I checked this morning, no one had joined, I was like, Look, well, it's, it's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Joseph Burgess at TC it. got his, yeah. and I don't think I got one, so uh -huh. I just got his. You know, he forwarded it. He forwarded to us, and yeah. I got yeah. yeah. it. I got it. I said you, it. You totally, you totally sent us one saying you were going to do it. Yeah. So I wonder I, if it. I, I did lost. put in everyone's email, everyone, yeah. sort of the key, mm -hmm. the contact people here, because yeah. I can't put in, like, everyone who's on every white paper, because I'd be typing emails for everyone. But, yeah. um, but that is odd. Yeah, I mean it's no big deal. We knew it was coming. And no, but and but I did join yesterday, so if you okay. didn't see anyone, I did join. Yeah. Okay, I, did I got them all, okay. and I didn't have to join. So it you was got not, them all. Yeah, I already had. So I already yeah, had. Oh, you know, it so didn't ask. It okay. doesn't didn't ask, ask me to join in. In or, or sign in. Right. Oh, but it just it just but it's, you're, you're it's just on there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Then you can download. Yeah. Then you can download. Yeah. Okay. I would say if anyone has continued problems, let me know. I figure. I mean, the one, the one tricky thing with Dropbox is I'm going to clearly, I will maintain copies of everything in Dropbox also separately, like on my computer, where no one can touch it. Because this is the one tricky thing with Dropbox, and if you guys would rather have another sort of distributional system, we can. Because in Dropbox, you know, say if you're in Dropbox, you can take something out of the folder and whoosh, away it goes. So, I more kind of view this as just a repository. We can certainly do a different system. I figure, every, you know, most people have Dropbox and part of it, at least for now putting just some, some things in there and clearly whatever, you know, I'm going to keep something separate so if we lose something, you know, I should, should be able to replace it. Um, but that's, 
that's something we're working forward in terms of how each group wants to sort of to write their particular piece. If you want to use Dropbox or Google Docs or sort of whatever works best for you, I figure that that's a much that's a better decision for each group to sort of have on their own. Um, and as much as you want me to be involved in that process, I can be or not. Yeah, that's fine too. I mean, you guys can see there's there's a long list of groups here, so I'm not going to be you know. Can't do everything. But yes. Um, I'd like to propose one that you can put the shoe down, which sure. is it might be helpful if uh -huh. we could today, if yes. we have time, have yes. everyone very quickly say this is what we're trying to do, like the highest level okay. summary. And that way, at least while we're all in the same room, we have an idea of where other people are coming from. And I want to read all of these other papers. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Yes. So, um, yeah. I'd just like to offer that up as well. That that's a great idea because we are we are pretty much out of my sort of official official agenda, which hey, only one thirty six. Uh, because purposely, because I figured people would have good ideas. So why don't unless there's any objections, why don't we do that next? Sometime. Um, let's see. Would you like to start some time you since you are <laughs> <laughs> and stand up so people can see you? Um, okay. So hi Pass everyone. If I don't know you, my name is Sunshine Menezes, and I am. Uh, at GSO. I run the Metcalf Institute for Marine and Environmental Reporting there. And we uh, try to improve science news coverage and environmental news coverage by helping journalists better understand the science underlying the news. And we also have been working with EPSCOR funding over the last few years to improve scientists' ability to communicate their research to public audiences. So building on that, uh, a group of us, including Tatiana Reinerson, among others, um, suggested that in this next round, we really focus on the faculty, on junior faculty especially. Um, and this was Tatiana's brilliant idea. I want to give credit where credit's due. We originally were thinking we would work with graduate students um, to really focus on some training programs for grad students to improve their ability to communicate. And then Tatiana pointed out that, in fact, the point of this is, this whole f score thing, is to um, you know, increase our research capacity here in Rhode Island. And grad students, while that's wonderful, are likely to leave. And therefore, they're not really helping us here in Rhode Island. Whereas junior faculty come in often. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm summarizing. Um, um, once they're graduated, of course, um, they're going to go on and do great things. So, um, But whereas junior faculty hopefully are going to stay, and most junior faculty come in without ever having been trained on how to communicate with public audiences. But not just that, also how to write a manuscript as as well as possible so that you're actually more likely to actually get a nature or a science paper and how to write a proposal that's really exceptional and all of these things that there are various groups to do at each person's institution but are never actually combined into a cohesive approach toward um, faculty development. So this is what we want to do and clearly there is place for every single institution in Rhode Island to be part of this. And so I encourage you to get in touch with me if you have ideas or questions. And why don't we yes. can make a really quick yes. pitch, and that is Sunshine is running some of these workshops currently, and if you see yeah. emails with those workshops advertised, if you can make it to any of those, I highly recommend it. One recent one had, um, had two really accomplished editors, one who used to edit the Science Times at the oh, that's time. Up. And that's April and she did, actually. One, she did one a year couple years ago. ago. So, and she's excellent. I tell you, I learned a lot at each of these. Right now, I can only recommend Thank you. Corey. April 16th, here on the Kingston campus in the Galanti Lounge of the library, Corey Dean, former editor of Science Times for the New York Times, will be talking about how to discuss scientific uncertainty. Um, so, Please come. It's free. We give you lunch. But you have to register at metpepinstitute.org. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So to make sure we get through everybody without running out of time, it's just dawned on me and sometimes talking. Um, why don't we have just one representative from each group talk briefly? Because we got we got sometimes which is good. Um, and then if you have affiliated people, just sort of point them out and they can wave or something. Just because I want to make sure we get through everybody here. So, actually, I'm John. It's telling me maybe we should go from the top down here. So, Marta or Baylor, who wants to speak? I'm happy to. I get it. Sure. Sure. <laughs> um, so I'm Baylor. I think we should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Marta and I were just combined. <laughs> oh, I know. A week ago, so we don't now. we don't yeah, necessarily agree yet, but we are going to. <laughs> um, so I'm yes. Baylor Fox Kemper. I am um, an oceanographer and climate modeler. Um, I just joined Brown about. 
15 months ago, so I'm new to the state. Um, and our proposal was essentially that in the past version of EPSCoR, there's lots of sort of monitoring ecology level stuff. And as a physical oceanographer and climate modeler, it seemed to me that there was a missing piece of connecting the life sciences to the circulation and the climate change pieces of this. And the normal tools we would use to do that would be observations monitoring together with a data assimilating model framework. And so the proposal was to make a model where we could do that part and where we could make the data available and we would have observations in lots of different places around Narragansett Bay, also out in the Sound, you know, lot related places so that those pieces would be available to any research operations happening anywhere in the state as well as other sort of uh, outreach or environmental questions that go along with that. So pollutant fate, all that stuff could benefit from having a well-validated model framework where everything is ready to go. We can give you the month you want. That's the plan. And then Marta's piece is more on connections outward from that, I think. So I've actually been here for a long time, so <laughs> I'm coming from the fact that I've been here so long. And there's a lot of work that has been done about our coastal environment from many different brilliant people. And it's about connecting the dots, like you say, putting them in a framework, and also um, including a, nat a social science part about what do we need to know before, what are the social and economic drivers that will need data, how are we going to use this data, and then also translate it so it can be used at the social and economic level, uh, implemented for the benefit of our society. So it's kind of bringing, a, a, a big component of that is having a place where all that data can be integrated and everybody can see where their data fit other data and, and also try to, to complete the holes that there are some holes in some places and trying to see where the holes are, see how it can be connect, you know, complemented and fill them and make everything together. And it connects with outreach and you know, all those different things. So that's the coastal observatory idea kind of thing. What we talked about. So I have a question for you. Sure. <laughs> so you said <laughs> Uh -oh. So you say that Bella and I are, yeah. are in charge of the research framework. You mean that we have to kind of no, 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 no. Okay, okay. that may be wrong. So the, the coastal, the you both had, you know, that's why I initially emailed you guys together. You both have sort of these very broad, overarching yeah. um, visions for sort of how to integrate different pieces. That's that's what I mean. I think research framework is the wrong word. So, okay, I just yes. wanted to make sure. Yeah, that yeah. No, it's a very good question. Yeah. Because actually having that research framework, I think, is what would really help all the teams together to write mm -hmm. their pieces. So right now, okay. we don't know what the, how the pieces fit, fit together. Okay. You've seen them all. So it may be really, yeah. really useful to have like a couple of paragraphs <coughs> that are actually what would be the, in, you know, yeah. the like approach. The summary. Yeah, the yeah, summary, yeah, yeah, exact yeah, summary of the grant that shows yeah. how the pieces fit together, like your idea. Right. Just yeah. as a point. Yeah, I can do that for you guys, absolutely. Yeah. Just as a point to start, yeah. because that will sure. help us all guide our research questions, you know, direct them a little bit more. Yeah. Because we may be, I'm just afraid that I'm going to start writing and I just go my own way. And <laughs> <laughs> this is also in part why, you know, these different groups are brought together, so that way, you know, you have to figure out, but yeah, I, I know you guys are kind of different. Yeah, but you know, yes. May no, first is not a yeah. lot of time for all of us to talk to all of us. Mm -hmm. No, I agree, and we have yeah. Yes. Some, so, so an idea of guidance, yeah. like yeah. having maybe sure. a midway. You know, I I can certainly I can certainly do something like that. That would be extremely useful. But okay. I guess there's one cross cutting. Yes. I, there are two cross cutting ideas that we had that I wanted to mention while everybody's okay. here. Briefly. Which was one to, to frame our grad student mm -hmm. support in the form of fellowships where students, whatever their support, could apply to it if they are doing something that's related. So that you get one year of support out of four years or something like that, and you get more people participating. And then the other part was to do like an annual research meeting where everyone on all the projects could get together yeah. at a location of mutual interest or migrating locations, whatever. But that would be something that I would hope to see other groups, you know, participating in and supporting and thinking about how that works in their budgets as well. 
Yeah, no, I, I very much want us to have journal. Okay, very quick, and then we got to get through everyone else. I'd encourage you to think really carefully about yeah. the duration of the fellowships. Yeah, yeah. Right now, the current UP score has gives out one one year at URI. fellowships at URI, yeah, right. and I would say it's not working very well. That's hard to do. Um, one because year one year isn't one it's not. So my student just finished her PhD. She got one year of EP score, but EP score doesn't own her PhD, right. right? And it's not enough for her to really develop an EP score yeah. related yeah. theme. So something to think about in, yeah. in your. Okay, Dan is here. Yes. Real brief. <laughs> Sorry, I just look at the time going, wait a minute, we, there's a lot of people on this list. Yeah, uh, I'm Dan McNally. Um, I do research and teach at Bryant University. I'm an environmental engineer. Uh, teach uh, environmental science. Um, we, have, uh, we have three white papers that were put together and uh, it will be brief, uh, otherwise I could spend about three hours talking about just about everything that we've covered with these white papers. Um, but on our team, we've put together uh, uh, watershed hydrolysis. hydrolysis. Uh, we're going to uh, spend a lot of time looking at the watersheds. Uh, that's probably our main focus. Um, we have uh, a number of toxicologists, uh, a geochemist, um, and we've added an uh, environmental ec uh, economist uh, for the economic development part. Um, we're going to be really focusing, though, on, on the sediments uh, in the bay uh, brought from the watersheds, uh, the pollution, anthropogenic pollution from, uh, from the watersheds. Most of the point sources have been identified, uh, so we're going to spend a lot of time trying to delineate, I guess, non-point sources, if that's possible. It's going to be a real challenge. But that's probably the main uh, input to the bay now from non-point sources. Uh, so we'll be looking at um, the impact from all this pollution uh, from, from metals uh, and organics, um, biologic uh, input. Um, so like I said, we, we, we do have to do a lot of paring down yet. but. Uh, we have a good start on this. Thank you, Dan. So does that mean that primarily a geochemical monitoring? And uh, how much biology or ecology is in there? Um, I know one of the ideas we have is, is to be able to learn more about eutrophication events. And uh, so we're going to uh, and, and be able to actually try to predict when an event might occur. Um, so, so we'll be looking at a lot of uh, you know, uh, microbiology work um, in, in monitoring that kind of event. Thank you. One last question, then we have to move on. Oh, hey, uh, Chris Kincaid from the NFG. So, and one thing is, um, you might want to talk to the group, Paul Reese's group from UMass, because we've been we've been working with them on. Uh, they've done a really good model of the Blackstone River cataloging about five or ten years worth of point source versus non-point source um, inputs to the Black Star Line. And they've done a very careful job. So they might, they might have some information that can help you. That's great. There is a lot of information. Um, and we, we are wanting to focus on the Blackstone River. Yeah, it's the biggest source of the All right, thank you. Thanks. Chris. OK. Jeff and Aang, or Jeff, you look like you're up. Um, we, we just met this morning. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay, so let me have an um, Do you, you want to go, or I can go? Uh, um, so, hi, my name is Aang Jao. I just came from to construct <coughs> biological pathways and understand how the ke biochemistry works and further connecting that into a population level kind of models and then we bring brain up to the higher scale we start to model the how the pathways would affect the biochemical molecules floating in the environment and eventually how that would affect 
the biology and biochemistry and geochemistry of the entire ecosystem. So, so that's the idea. Okay. Okay. In the interest of time, yeah, you we're good. You're good. Okay. Great. Okay. All right, Jeff, for the nano people. All right. Right. So your Jeff Morgan is not here. Correct. Nano bio. Oh, oh, so, oh, great. Uh, Hi everyone, uh, briefly. So I, I'm Jeff Bothan. I'm in chemical engineering here at URI, and I'm working with Jeff Morgan. He's up at Brown University. Um, we collectively have involved about 45 or so plus people yeah. from seven different institutions. So we've got a lot of people involved in, in our two uh, initiatives here. Um, so uh, Jeff is uh, interested in, in, in a biomems center, so the creation of a biomems facility um, at. at uh, at Brown University that would facilitate the development of new biosensors that can be used in uh, marine environments. And this kind of inherently is going to incorporate uh, a lot of molecular and nanoscale fabrication techniques and, and tools and a lot of interesting science and engineering behind uh, the development of these new biosensors. And I, maybe when I'm done, he can speak a little more of that if you'd like to. Um, we're, we're on kind of the nano end. So we were marine nanoscience and nanotechnology. We were trying to uh, uh, really collaborate with all of you. Uh, as engineers, we have tools and capabilities and skill sets that can um, find new knowledge, create new materials, create new processes. Um, we have a lot of very nice uh, uh, capabilities in, in the nanoscale and even atomic scale characterization of dry and wet materials in complex environments. Um, and we want to expand that. Uh, we're interested in questions how can nanoscience and nanotechnology be used to improve the health of marine ecosystems, coastal ecosystems? What sort of novel nanotechnologies can be used to mitigate spills uh, or track spills? Uh, and what sort of inspiration can be drawn from marine environments to create new materials and new processes? It can be related to energy harvesting, you know, anti-fouling, anti-corrosive surfaces, things like that. Sensors, sensor platforms. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff, did you want to add? Oh, that was great. I mean, we are nano, but we're, we're pretty big for nano, so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, think big. Yeah, think big. And Giant nano. Jeff did a great job <laughs> of summarizing it. And that there is a fair amount of, of material science and engineering, of course, at Brown. Uh, I represent biomedical engineering, which tries to be the interface between these disciplines. And so I think there's a great opportunity. There's also an opportunity with respect to economic development because the widgets we're proposing to make are often the kinds of things that get commercialized. Right. And I just wanted to say to Dan that I was at a meeting at Brown where uh, somebody from the EDC and the, um, what was it, Rhode Island found the Providence Foundation were looking to the possibility of building incubator space in the state of Rhode Island for like startup companies. So that might be, I can send you their emails. Yeah, that might be a good thing. Appreciate that. That'd be great, thank you. All right, let's see. Next on the list. Um, is Neil or Joe here? Neil. Neil's here. Oh, hi. We're hiding back there. Hi. Yeah, <laughs> Neil Overstrom, I'm the director of the Nature Lab at Rhode Island School of Design. And we, our team is teaming up with a team under the leadership of uh, Joe DeGeorgis at, at uh, Collins College uh, to explore questions around what I would characterize as the visualization and representation of the objects, data, and phenomena of science. Um, we're building on the work that RISD has been doing in the, under the existing EPSCOR grant to look at um, uh, uh, data visualization, visualization, as I said, of, of objects and phenomena, also science communication, and, and also looking at collaborative platforms. What can um, artists, designers uh, bring to the conversation uh, of, uh, of the exploration of new ideas, uh, facilitating innovation, looking at that in new ways, innovative ways, and looking at how uh, qualitative, what I would call qualitative or subjective, often visual inquiry can complement the type of inquiry that we see in the sciences. Um, our vision is to uh, explore these questions and again, working with, uh, with Joe and our colleagues at um, Rhode Island College, working with computer scientists at, um, at Brown, uh, here with our colleagues at URI, with whom we've been working over the past four years, uh, to really build a bioimaging consortium across the state that would hopefully have an application not only in our work, but across, across all the other fields and projects that are under our uh, development right now. So. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Great, thank you, ma'am. Um, let's see here. Jim. No, I don't think Jim's here. No, it's not. Okay. Um, Amy. Okay. I'm Tim Pelletier. I'm currently the CCRI Outreach Coordinator under the current PepsiScore grant, uh, primarily to build um, some infrastructure for CCRI and to, uh, within the last three or four years, focus on outreach education for grades 6 to 12. Uh, in the next round of funding, we partnered with uh, Amy, obviously here through um, URI's office, and um, Tom Polchik um, and some other um, institutions around to leverage expertise that they may incorporate it. I know you mentioned some engineering and neurotechnology to um, be able to provide educational models for K-12 students um, as well as the teachers and to try to uh, develop, expand, infuse some of the EPSCO knowledge base into the current curriculum in the state of Rhode Island, um, which is always a challenge. Um, but we've been able to do that in little pockets, and with the help of our current partners, um, have been able to provide opportunities for students to work um, amongst our partners, some with um, at PC, you know, with, at Dan, at, at Bryant in the past, at CCRI, as well as at URI, at the Graduate School of Oceanography, excuse me, Oceanography. So we want to expand that pool. Um, we included seven or so partners on our, on our white paper, but um, we really want to be all inclusive. Um, you know, Neil has come up with some great ideas, has, has been ongoing and been doing some great work um, with outreach education with the Nature Lab and, and some other things we want to build on with what, what RISD has been doing um, as well as what URI and Brown has, have been doing and to really um, enhance what the PUIs can offer in their outreach efforts. I know it's always a challenge financially and, and time-wise, so hopefully with this next round of funding we can provide some kind of human capital to organize some of these um, these these plans and missions and to really get everybody on board with providing their expertise to the state of Rhode Island and I think ultimately um, it's going to go into developing that pipeline and economic development which we have been talking with with STAC and other programs um, throughout the seven years or so EPSCO has been here. So we're looking forward to really working with everybody and to really showcasing the modes of expertise that are currently being used and are being introduced in the next round of funding for um, the EPSCO program. I would, I would just add really quickly that um, our, if you look at it, if you take the moment to look at our paper, our white paper, um, you'll see it's broken down between EPSCOR staff initiatives and then we, we do have the seven PUIs. With, we're, it wasn't like we're going to tell you what to do, you do what you want. So everybody kind of threw something into the pot. So if URI and Brown would like to jump on board and you know look at the models that we put up and, and come up with something that you that works with your knowledge base and your research and what you're doing uh, we're happy to incorporate leverage uh, relationships and see what um, how we can work together so I think um, that would be great if you want to talk more or email thank you Amy. all right so I'm just going to mention Jim Lemire who's not here he's the one who's been running the, uh, the undergraduate surf pro program he's based at Roger Lynch University so that has been a wonderful you know um, resource for the past several years, you know, that, that's definitely going to be a key part of this next proposal moving forward. So, you know, feel free to get in touch with Jim on your own if you want to. If you want me as intermediate, that's intermediary, that's fine too. Um, and then the last part that's on there is the NSF EPSCOR database that's proposed by Lisa Smolsky and, and uh, Rick and a couple of colleagues, which would be to essentially create um, create a data database of EPSCOR researchers throughout the state because that's something that we've gotten feedback from some of our PUIs you have new faculty coming in there, they may not necessarily know, okay, who are all the other people, who are the key players, and so it would be sort of a central way of, of uh, bringing them together, and I've encouraged them to talk with the RISD x folks to try to make that, you know, work, work as well as, as it can together. Now I should ask, are, are callers in, does anyone have a question? We're almost at two, but I want to get, get any questions if any of you have, have things to share. I'm fine. Yeah. Good here. Okay, great. <laughs> Yes, Ed. If I could just yeah. add to the, uh, in terms of the research database, I just Please. want to give a plug for the, uh, the website, CORES Rhode Island, CORES mm -hmm. RI. Yeah. And, yeah. and that lists all the core facilities and equipment. It's a searchable database. Um, so if you plug in microscope, you know, it's your word, uh, you'll get everything, all sorts of microscopes, fluorescent microscope, electron microscopes, whatever. You can search by institution. We've got several institutions involved now, and you can search by. Uh, of 
funding center, so some of the, the COBRAs uh, uh, from NIH have uh, been very critical in, in Rhode Island the last you know, 10, 15 years in terms of enhancing our core facilities. And so you know what, what, which COBRA uh, search by that, that particular award mechanism, and then you, you will get the URL, the link to the website for that core facility in all those cases. So I just want to give a plug for that for those who uh, don't, uh, haven't used it yet. Yeah, I think that would be great also if you're looking at equipment or things to buy, look and see what we first have because you know, we want we want to be sort of expanding as much as we can and not duplicating something that's good. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's great to know that this is available. Are there, if you go to the website, are there clear instructions on how to get your piece of equipment? Yes, on that yeah, website? right at the bottom is a contact and okay. we, we're encouraging the physical sciences at, 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 at uh, Brown last year and, uh, and this year again. There's a, uh, the, the uh, provost has made some money available to buy uh, equipment that, and it has to go into core facilities. And we're, and we're planning to make it, we're about to release those, the, the current round of uh, announcements for awards and we're talking about making it a requirement <laughs> that people get in order to get the award, you have to act, you know, advertise this piece of you know, instrumentation on, on the website. But right at the bottom, yeah, just go to courseri.org, uh, and uh, right at the bottom is the contact uh, information, and we're, we're eager to add on um, you know, all, all equipment. It has to be, it has to be sh you know, shareable to some extent. I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to be uh, necessarily a cost recovery center, but um, you know, it could be something in someone's lab, but something that, would, that, that, that that lab is willing to share on a negotiated basis. Sorry, I think two seconds. Question. While yes. we're doing plugs, <laughs> I'm also the communications coordinator. Yes. I'm tasked with letting the public know all the amazing stuff uh, that you guys do and all the brilliant work. So please, any stories, uh, um, look at our webpage, rifscore.org, um, under news and events, and you'll see all the stories that I try to do. I would love to do more research stories and try and tell the stories, but to a non-science audience. So, uh, you know, if you get papers published, need discoveries, please let me know for stuff you're working on. Thank you. All right, so it's just about two. I think I want to formally end the meeting, but I will hang around if you guys have questions or want to stay and chat with each other. I don't think we're getting kicked out of this room, so thank you guys all so much for coming. I know it's a lot of time out of everyone's day, so thank you.